Hey everybody, welcome to another Glasgow Secret Geometry. So today I'm exploring Crookston Castle on the south side of Glasgow. I think this is one of the great undervalued uh, tourist attractions of the town. It's a little um, hard to get to. You have to uh, get a bus here or a couple of buses and it's situated in the middle of this uh, post-war council housing scheme. Uh, the houses sort of uh, surround the castle almost like a besieging army. But as castles go, it's not bad. And it's the, um, the second oldest building in Glasgow and it's the only surviving medieval castle in fact. So if you've uh, got kids who are into castles, as I was when I was a young boy, uh, this is a great place to bring them. It's fun to explore. Now it dates back to the uh, 14th century, uh, 15th century, sorry, around about the year 1400 the main castle was built. But it's actually on a much earlier site uh, that was built in the 12th century by a chap called Robert de Croc, hence Croc's tomb or Crookston. And we have this prominent hillock that's overlooking the Leveren water, so it was uh, guarding this important uh, trade route along the river. And uh, excavations haven't shown up anything earlier than the medieval stuff, but Harry seemed to think it was quite reasonable to assume, because of its high point in the landscape, that it was likely to have been a prehistoric site. And it fits well into his uh, sightline network, as the views from up here are pretty spectacular, as we'll see. So behind me here you can probably see the fall down the uh, side of the hill here. This is towards the Leavern Water. And you might be able to see some of the, the ditches and uh, ramparts that were built. Now archaeologically, um, nothing earlier than medieval has been found here. But uh, you know, that's no reason to suppose that uh, it hasn't been an earlier site. Um, indeed Harry thought so, because it seems to be such a, a locus on the Glasgow network. There's so many alignments pass through this site. And uh, from the top of the tower you can actually see quite a lot of the other places in Glasgow. So uh, let's go and have a look. So the castle belonged to the Stuarts of Darnley and it uh, was famously besieged in 1544 when the uh, Stuart Earl of Lennox got into a tiff with James IV and he brought the famous cannon uh, Mons Meg through from Edinburgh and besieged the, uh, the castle, destroying most of it. So originally it had this uh, square form with uh, four towers, one in each corner. And there's only one remaining now because uh, James IV shot the other ones down with Mons Meg. socket and conduit providing water to the kitchen. I'm using my uh, the light on my phone here just to show you this well which is inside the, the main keep and wells of course would be essential to uh, any castle under siege and uh, it's probably the reason why the castle is here but it's the reason why most castles are where they are and of course you would have had a dowser to, uh, to site these wells properly. Places for example like uh, Edinburgh Castle is you know, situated on a volcanic plug so you wouldn't have actually had um, any way of knowing where the water was unless you had a dowser who could douse the fissures in the, the hard basaltic rock where you could uh, actually dig a well and get some flows of water. This is the, uh, the undercroft of the castle underneath the, the Great Hall. So you can see the wonderful vaulted ceiling here. Pretty good arch work, I must say. Pretty good arches. And there's remains of an old staircase that would have gone upstairs. It's on the other side as well. Uh, so this is probably just used for um, storage, where they kept all the all the food. It's the nearest thing you had to a cold room, I, I guess. And some of these doorways, you can see uh, over here, would have led into the other towers, which were destroyed during the siege. Thank you. 
So up on the top of the castle here, uh, just walking around the parapets, um, this is one of the sites in uh, Harry's uh, network that he called the Glasgow Triangle. Uh, this is the, the westernmost corner of the Glasgow Triangle. And he had a baseline running from here through to the Camp Hill Ringwork and then an apex point at the Glasgow Necropolis. And that was his original triangle. He subsequently uh, added another point to this by extending this baseline from Crookston Castle through the Camp Hill over towards Carmyle Fords which is an odd choice for a sightline centre. Um, it, it's a low point in the landscape with two um, old ancient river crossings of the River Clyde, uh, where it was relatively shallow. Um, but it's, it's a bit of a mess of lines. You know, there's no definite point that you can find. And when I was trying to map this out in Google Earth, I had great difficulty actually picking a, a location for that. Um, but I guess, you know, if you're following the sight lines going from hilltop to hilltop, you're going to come across the River Clyde at some point, and it would be good to know where the, the fording places were. Um, one of the other fording places was at Govan, and uh, of course Govan Old Parish Church is part of the network, and that was a well-known fording point where you could cross the river on um, stepping stones. So here in the top you get a great view of the surrounding landscape. You can see the Tower of Leverandere Hospital there, and uh, it does seem like another significant point in the landscape, but um, Harry didn't mention it at all. It was, however, featured heavily by May Miles Thomas in her film The Devil's Plantation. Um, in fact, um, half the story that she put in that film is about a patient uh, from Leverndale. The old hospital has been redeveloped now, that's just the, the tower that's remaining. And uh, over beyond it, in roughly that direction, is uh, Paisley Abbey. Can't quite see it from here. Um, I'm not sure if I can see it or not. Try to zoom in a bit more. I think it's just beyond these uh, factory buildings with the chimneys there that you can see. Looking through the trees here, you can just see the uh, the edge of Pollock Park. So that uh, is the the Burrow Ring Works uh, running through there, and through to Camp Hill, which unfortunately you can't see. And over to the left just sort of about where those two tower blocks are. Uh, beyond that is the necropolis and again is on a, an alignment, a direct alignment from here. side of the, the castle here. Uh, this is where there was supposed to be the yew tree that uh, Mary Queen of Scots uh, betrothed herself to Lord Darnley. It's long gone but you, you can still find it marked on old urban survey maps. And according to Sir Walter Scott, uh, Mary Queen of Scots watched the Battle of Langside here, uh, which was a pretty good uh, feat given that there's no direct sight line to the Battle of Langside from here. This Pollock Park is in the way. So, in the distance, way over there, is uh, the Devil's Plantation. Just to the left of the houses there, is the Devil's Plantation. Uh, sort of where the wind farm is on the horizon. And 
down here we can see some of the remains of the uh, the ditch uh, and, uh, and ramparts surrounding the original castle site built by Robert de Croc. This would most likely have been a wooden palisaded enclosure just with the, uh, the ramparts and the, the, the ditch dug to protect it. Uh, but that's very typical of course of uh, prehistoric uh, earthworks as well. So there's no reason why uh, this could not have been a prehistoric earthwork and indeed Harry Bell thought it was such a thing. So there you have it, Crookston Castle, one of Glasgow's most underrated tourist attractions. So come and visit, bring your children, they'll love it. Thanks for watching. <laughs>